Greetings and welcome to my channel. It's UFO time again. There are so many reported UFO sightings that it's impossible to count them all, but some cases are well documented, so we can make up our own mind about them. Although there are sightings as recent as few days ago, I'm going back to past and present some cases that I found interesting even more so because of the way governments and military were trying to debunk them. You can guess, well-trained civil and military pilots cannot tell the difference between UFO, balloon or some of the planets. It makes me laugh, really. On today's menu we have three UFO encounters that took place back in the 50s. Before we start, recommendation for all of you who enjoy real ghost videos. My buddy the 3X is making some great stuff, so visit him, subscribe and like his videos. Link is in the description box. Ok, let's uh, see what was flying over our heads. Green fireballs are the type of unidentified flying object that has been reported since the early 1950s. Early sightings primarily occurred in the southwestern United States, particularly in New Mexico. Although some ufologists and ufology organizations consider green fireballs to be of artificial extraterrestrial origin, mainstream explanations have been provided, including natural bullets. Early observations of green fireballs date to late 1948 New Mexico and include reports from two plane crews, one civilian and the other military, on the night of December 5, 1948. These crews described the observed fireballs as bright green ball of fire and like a huge green meteor. On December 8, another aerial observation of a green fireball was reported by two pilots. In a letter to the US Air Force dated December 20, Lincoln La Paz, an astronomer from the University of New Mexico, wrote that the observed objects were atypical of meteors. On January 13, 1949, the director of Army Intelligence from Fort Army headquarters in Texas wrote that the green fireballs may be the result of radiological warfare experiments by a foreign power, and that they are of such great importance, especially as they are occurring in the vicinity of sensitive installations, that a scientific board should study the situation. A February 1949 conference at Los Alamos, attended by members of Project Sign, scientists including Joseph Kaplan and Edwin Teller, and military personnel was unable to identify the origin of the observed green fireballs. Secret conferences at Los Alamos and elsewhere later in 1949 and addressing green fireballs were also claimed by Edward Ruppelt and ufologists including Jerome Clark to have convened. In December 1949, Project Twinkle, a network of green fireball observation and photographic units, were established but never fully implemented. It was discounted two years later, with the official conclusion that the phenomena were likely natural in origin. Theoretical astrophysicist and UFO skeptic Donald Menzel claimed to have observed in May 1949 a green fireball near Alamogordo which he later considered to be an ordinary meteor. Green fireballs have more recently been observed in Japan and Australia. The Carson Sink case is a UFO incident alleged by John McGean and John Barton, two United States Air Force colonels, to have taken place near Carson Sink in Western Nevada in the United States, while they were en route from California to Colorado in B-25 on July 24, 1952. Both colonels work at the Pentagon at the time, with assignments that would have made them very familiar with military aircraft of the era, both domestic and foreign. The aircraft were also reported as being seen by hundreds of residents. On July 24, 1952, two Air Force colonels requisitioned the twin-engine B-25 bomber 
at Hamilton Field north of San Francisco for a flight to Colorado Springs. At 3.40 p.m. Mountain Time, while flying at 11,000 feet with a speed of 180 knots over Carson Sink, two pilots saw three unknown aircraft ahead of them and to their right. At first, the two thought the aircraft were F-86 jet, but determined that the aircraft were flying too high for that to be the case. On the top of this, the pilots reported that aircraft to be flying in a V formation, which was abnormal for military aircraft at the time. With seconds, the aircraft had come close enough to B-25 that the pilots could determine the unidentified aircraft to be bright silver Delta Wing aircraft that were lacking tails and pilots' canopies. The colonels also reported that the aircraft had a ridge that ran from nose to tail. The aircraft then made a sharp left turn, passing with 800 yards of the B-25 before flying off in what the pilots estimated to be a speed that was three times the speed of F-86, placing them out of sight within four seconds. Upon landing in Colorado Springs, the pilots reported the incidents to Air Defense Command headquarters, who told them that no civilian or military aircraft had been anywhere near Carlson Sink at the time they were passing over the area. The closest known Delta Wing aircraft were on the west coast at the time. On top of this, the Navy aircraft were painted to be dark blue. Air Defense Command reported the incident to Project Blue Book, but it remained unexplained. In his subsequent book, The Report on Unidentified Flying Objects, Edward Ruppelt characterized it as a good UFO report with an unknown conclusion. Both pilots continued to dismiss the idea that the aircraft were F-86s. The investigation also looked into the balloons, both weather balloons and research balloons that can be up to 100 feet wide, but there were no known balloons in the area either. Both of the pilots had friends who themselves had reported flying saucers. McGean and Barton expressed skepticism of these reports previous to the incident, but upon being interviewed in Colorado Springs, they reported they had changed their opinions. Before we continue, just a little recommendation. If you haven't seen the TV show Project Blue Book, make sure to do so, it's really good. And without any spoilers, I can tell you that Dr. Alan Hynek is a brilliant but underappreciated college professor who is recruited by the US Air Force to spearhead an operation called Project Blue Book. He is joined by his partner, Air Force Captain Michael Quinn, as they investigate UFO sightings around the country. They use science to determine what really happened to cause the sighting, and some cases cannot be explained. In those instances, Hynek believes he is being duped by government into a larger conspiracy that covers up the truth. It is set in the Cold War and Atomic Era, and each case blends UFO theories with authentic historical events. That's in short, make sure you see the show, it's really good. The Gorman dogfight was a widely publicized UFO incident which took place on October 1, 1948, in the skies over Fargo, North Lakota. United States Air Force Captain Edward G. Ruppelt wrote in his best-selling and influential The Report on Unidentified Flying Objects that the dogfight was one of three classic UFO incidents in 1948 that proved to Air Force intelligence specialists that UFOs were real. However, in 1949, the USAF concluded that the Gorman dogfight has been caused by a lighted weather balloon. Although he was only 25 years old when the incident occurred, George Gorman was a veteran pilot of World War II. After the war, he became the manager of a construction company. He also served as a second lieutenant in the North Dakota National Guard. On October 1, 1948, Gorman was participating in the cross-country flight with other National Guard pilots. He was flying a P-51 Mustang. His flight arrived over Fargo at approximately 8.30 p.m. Although the other pilots decided to land at Fargo Hector Airport, 
Gorman decided to take advantage of the clear cloudless conditions and get in some night flight time, staying aloft. Around 9 pm he flew over a stadium where a high school football game was being held. Gorman noticed a small Piper Cub plane flying some 500 feet below him, otherwise the skies appeared clear. Shortly after he noticed the Piper Cub, Gorman saw another object to his vest. When he looked for the outline of a wing or fuselage, he could see none. This contrasted with the Piper Cub, whose outline was clearly visible. The object appeared to be blinking light. At 9.07 pm, Gorman contacted the control tower at Hector Airport and asked if they had any air traffic in the air other than his P-51 and the Piper Cub. The tower answer was negative and it contacted the Piper Cub pilot Dr. Cannon. Cannon and his passengers answered that they also could see a light object to the west. Gorman told the tower that he was going to pursue the object to determine its identity. He moved his Mustang to full power, but soon realized that the object was going too fast for him to catch it in a straight run. Instead, he tried cutting the object off by turns. Gorman made a right turn and approached the object head-on at 5000 feet. The object flew over his plane to a distance of about 500 feet. Gorman described the object as a simple ball of light, about 6 to 8 inches in diameter. He also noted later that when the object increased its speed, it stopped blinking and grew brighter. After his near collision, Gorman lost sight of the object. When he saw it again, it appeared to have made a 180 degree turn and was coming at him again. The object that made a sudden vertical climb. Gorman followed the object in his own steep climb. At 14,000 feet his P-51 stalled. The object was still 2,000 feet above him. Gorman made two further attempts to get closer to the object, with no success. It seems to make another head-on pass, but broke off before coming close to his fighter. By this point the object has moved over Hector Airport. In the control tower, the air traffic controller, Jensen, viewed the object through binoculars, but could see no form or shape around the light. He was joined by Dr. Cannon and the passengers from the Piper Cub. They had landed and walked to the control tower to get a better view of the object. Gorman continued to follow the object until he was approximately 25 miles southwest of Fargo. At 14,000 feet, he observed the light at 11,000 feet. He then dived on the object at full power. However, the object made a vertical climb. He tried to pursue it but watched as the object passed out of visual range. At this point, he broke off the chase. It was 9.27 pm. Gorman flew back to Hector Airport. Within a few hours, military officers from Project Sign, the United States Air Force study of UFO phenomena, arrived to interview Gorman, Dr. Cannon, his passenger, and the control tower personnel at Hector Airport. The officers also checked Gorman P-51 Mustang with Geiger counter for radiation. They found that the Mustang was measurably more radioactive than other fighters which have not flown for several days. This was taken as evidence that Gorman had flown close to atomic-powered object. USAF investigators also ruled out the possibility of the lighted object being another aircraft, Canadian Vampire Jet Fighter or a weather balloon. Their initial conclusion, writes UFO historian Curtis Pibbles, was that something remarkable had occurred to Gorman in the skies above Fargo. However, further investigation by Project Sign personnel soon revealed flaws in the evidence. A plane flying high in the Earth atmosphere is less shielded from the radiation than the one at the ground level. Thus, the Geiger readings were considered invalid evidence for stating that the object was atomic powered. In addition, the Air Weather Service revealed that on October 1st it had released a lighted weather balloon from Fargo at 8.50 pm. 
By 9 p.m. the balloon would have been in the area where Gorman and the Piper Cub passengers first saw the lighted object. Project Science investigators also believe that the incredible movements of the objects were due to Gorman's own maneuvers. As he chased the light, the object's maneuvers were an illusion brought about by the movements of Gorman's fighter. The investigators also believe that as the weather balloon passed out of sight, Gorman had come to believe that the planet Jupiter was the UFO, and therefore he had been chasing the planet as he flew south of Fargo before giving up and returning to land. By early 1949, the Gorman case was labeled by Project Sign and its successors, Project Grudge and Project Blue Book, as being caused by a weather balloon. So, what do you guys think about these cases? Leave your comments. And if you know of any interesting UFO sighting or you have some scary stories through fictional creepypasta, whatever, feel free to send it my way. Emails are on the screen right now and in the description box. That's all for today. Stay safe and I'll see you soon.